So case one is, um, you know, this lab seems like they have some sort of donut session every Friday. Um, I'm not a donut person, but they like donuts in this case study. And, um, and it seems like, you know, the PI and um, this postdoc that are both from Germany and have that heritage in common are speaking in German, and then other folks are coming into the interaction and are showing body language, at least from we can read here, that they're uncomfortable. So Emily sits really far away. Um, and the narrator is, is, you know, feeling guilty about, you know, should I be having this special relationship with my advisor? But at the same time, that's exactly, you know, what I think helps them do their science and feel included themselves. So I think this is really complicated. What kinds of issues does this specific case raise for you? I mean, clearly this example that you just brought up is really pertinent. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think there is a question of you know, your interpersonal interactions with the supervisor and then thinking about the more general dynamics of the lab and what's best for the lab group and when you have times that are more for the lab group versus more for kind of interpersonal interactions. I think the worst thing to do, in my, in my opinion, would be to just leave it like that. Um, if you don't want to kind of confront your PI, what I would do, for example, would be to talk to the person that you felt uh, you alienated by not doing anything, for example. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of, well, for example, you could agree that if that happens next time, if that person doesn't do something like, oh, hi, good morning, is this the now donut coffee session, <laughs> so that you kind of bring yourself into the conversation, the other person could be like, oh, hi, see, yeah, welcome, just grab a mm -hmm. chair, sit with us, and then you switch language, for example. And that could be agreed upon, even if you don't want to include the PI, uh, if you don't want to create conflict. And then the PI will get it. I mean, it's a highly educated person. It will get that it should have done that themselves. Uh, so you're, theoretically. At least yeah. theoretically, yes. Well, yeah, no. Um, so you're, I mean, what I'm hearing is like agreed ground rules in the lab itself. And so in this case, the narrator um, would approach Susan, who kind of came and turned away, and then Emily, who, who went to the far end of the table and kind of bring them in and, or maybe unpack it and say, oh, I'm sorry if that was super weird next time, yeah. you know, um, we'll have this norm. Uh, so working with them as colleagues. Basically. Yes, exactly. But I think this is also a really like appropriate thing to bring up to your supervisor if you have like you know a weekly or a bi-weekly or a monthly meeting just be like oh hey I don't know if you noticed but maybe we should keep the German to purely when it's the two of us because I'm afraid that you know this Susan and Emily didn't feel like they were they were participating and I think you know language differences are certainly a, a salient and can be like a complex and kind of fraught thing but I think that also the same situation applies if you, like I know I have a friend whose um, supervisor had a really hard time with um, using they, them pronouns for a particular member of the lab group. And she was, but my friend who was a postdoc was like trying to figure out if it was better to say something directly to the supervisor, her, you know, PI about, you should really be, you know, work harder to use they, them pronouns. But I think that you can kind of take this and apply it to a variety of situations where as a postdoc you have some amount of responsibility and uh, power in a lab setting and you ha I think that, that you can use your privilege to advocate for the other members of your lab group who aren't feeling included and who might need somebody a little bit more powerful than them to you know elbow your PI and make them kind of keep track of things and be better in the future. No I, I totally agree I think there's I mean as you say this is a the person that is in the position of privilege, the postdoc, I mean, that is shares the same uh, identity, language, perhaps, uh, country with the, with the PI, to kind of stand up and be a role model in, in that sense. And talking to the colleague could be one. Definitely doing it with the PI could be another one. And try to be more inclusive. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Erin. Yeah, no, it would be much worse or much harder for Susan or Emily to approach the PI, um, so I agree. I, I think the fact that the narrator here is in that position of commonality, um, you know, presents an opportunity, assuming that their relationship with the PI is healthy and mm -hmm. that they're able to have that conversation. Do you have any thoughts about, so if we pursue the strategy of, of talking to Emily and Susan as colleagues, you know, 
how would you open that conversation? So if you're the narrator and, and um, it's your cultural experience that you share with the PI one way or the other, what might you say? Um, hi, Susan. Hi, Emily. I'm sorry if you felt excluded. Next time, just come closer to us and I'll just invite you to sit uh, with us as well. I'm just welcoming. I think that's that's the best uh, thing that I would do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a, a reasonable... Yeah, don't make it a situation. I wouldn't make it a situation, if yeah. the other, per- especially if the other person doesn't feel like it's a situation we need to... I mean, we don't want to alienate that person mm-hmm. further by yeah. saying, okay, you did this wrong, you should have come to us. It's like, oh, no, just grab a chair. Like, next time, just grab a chair and yeah. sit with us. And I, I mean, since they're saying this is a, a new p- grad student who's here, a new postdoc, like, I think you could say, like, oh, sorry, you know, normally we, we do speak English when we're in these big lab groups. We just, you know, got carried away, and next time, you know, we'll be more mindful of it and make sure that you're part of the conversation, too. Okay. 